Recall that average velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. So displacement is our change in position, so that's delta R, and the time it took to move from the initial position to the final position is my delta T. So if I take that displacement vector and divide it by the amount of time it took to move from one position to the other, that will give me a vector that represents my average velocity. How do we calculate that delta R? Well, this is the mathematical uh, formula, but if you want to look at an example, we can go back to what we did in lesson 4-2. When we moved from this position to this position, we did R2 minus R1, which I set up here as R2 plus negative R1, and we got our answer for delta R, 12 in the X and 3 in the Z. 9 minus negative 3 became 9 plus 3, 2 minus 2, and 8 minus 5. Uh, so that's what this is saying you do right here. You're doing the change in x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, and z2 minus z1 for our delta z. Then to get the average velocity, we're going to take each of those terms and divide them by the amount of time that it took. So here is the uh, equation that I got for delta r the vector that I got for delta R, 12 in the X and 3 in the Z, and now I'm going to take each of those terms and I'm going to divide it by the amount of time it took. So for this example, we'll say it took two seconds to move from that initial position to that final position. So I take each of these terms and I divide them by two to come up with my average velocity vector has a component in the X of 6 meters per second and a component in the Z direction of 1.5 meters per second. When we speak of velocity, we're not talking about the average velocity, however. We're talking about the instantaneous velocity. What is the velocity at some instant in time, not over some time interval? So here in this diagram, we showed that delta R is the change in position or the displacement over some time interval. So let's let that time interval shrink to a zero. So that what will that mean? It means that this point at time 2, since the time interval is going to shrink to 0, it's going to shrink down, and this point 2 will move closer over to point 1. Delta R will approach 0, and the direction of delta R will approach the tangent line to the path. This red line here is the path the particle is taking. This is the tangent line to that path. The direction of delta R, as 2 moves towards 1, the direction of delta R will approach the direction of the tangent line. Delta R's magnitude will approach 0, and the average velocity will approach the value of the instantaneous velocity. What is the velocity at the instant that the particle is at uh, point 1? And so a very important point from this discussion is, the direction of the instantaneous velocity of a particle is always tangent to the particle's path at the particle's position uh, in question. Here it is written mathematically. We say that the instantaneous velocity is the derivative of the position with respect to time. So right here is an expression for my position. And I'm going to take the derivative of that with respect to time to give me the velocity. So the derivative of the x component of position is dx dt, the derivative of the y component dy dt, and the derivative of the z component dz dt, and those give me the velocity in the x, the velocity in the y, and the velocity in the z, all three of the uh, components of velocity. And the magnitude... We can say the magnitude of the x component is dx dt, the magnitude of the y component dy dt, and the magnitude of the z component dz dt. So let's use our uh, sample problem 4-2 with the rabbit running across the field. Let's use that as an example here to find the rabbit's velocity at some time point, let's say at time equals 15 seconds. So that's what we want to do. We want to find the velocity at time equals 15, remember if it just says velocity, that implies the instantaneous velocity, not the average velocity. Okay, so here were the parametric equations given to us that describes the rabbit's uh, displacement 
or position, excuse me, des- describes the rabbit's position in the X as a function of time and describes the rabbit's position uh, in the Y uh, as a function of time. So we're, to find the velocity in the X, we're going to take the derivative of X with respect to time and the velocity in the Y is the derivative of Y with respect to time. So taking the derivative of this, we get this expression and then we're going to plug in for t, 15 seconds, and when we plug that in our calculator, we see that at time equals 15 seconds, the rabbit's x component of velocity is negative 2.1 meters per second. And likewise, in the y direction, his component of velocity in the y direction is negative 2.5 meters per second. So when we take that uh, velocity in the x that's this component of his velocity right there. And this uh, negative 2.5 in the y is this component of the velocity right there. There's the y component. There's the x component. Of course, the velocity, as we said, is tangent to the path at that point. So you can see that velocity vector there does appear to be tangent to the rabbit's path. And this is the x component. This is the y component. What is the magnitude of the velocity? Right here, the magnitude of this vector. Uh, these lines here indicate magnitude. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we square the numbers and take the square root of that to give us a magnitude of 3.3 meters per second. So this vector right here has a magnitude of 3.3 meters per second. What is its direction? Well, we'll take the inverse tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side, that would give me this angle right in here. And so that would be uh, negative 2.5 over negative 2.1. And let's see what happens when we plug that into our calculator. Let's see what we get when we plug into our calculator inverse 10 of negative 2.5 divided by negative 2.1. We get almost 50 degrees. And of course it's no different if we had just uh, gotten rid of the negative signs ourselves. 2.5 divided by 2.1. The inverse tan of that is also 50 degrees. So this is an example of when you have to be careful uh, when you use the inverse tangent function. Uh, we just showed you that we got 50 degrees as the inverse tangent when we used both positive 2.1 and 2.5 and both negative 2.1 and negative 2.5. So with positive 2.1 to the right and positive 2.5 for a y goes up, that gives me this diagram and 50 degrees in my diagram would be located right here. If I do negative 2.1 in the x and negative 2.5 in the y, now my inverse tangent of the y component over the x component, this is my angle 50 degrees here. So when I look over in this diagram, we have to remember that direction is described always starting with zero degrees at the positive x-axis. And if we go clockwise, excuse me, if we go counterclockwise, then we have a positive angle. And if we go clockwise, we have a negative angle. So if this is 50 degrees here, then this whole angle is 50 uh, plus 180. So this whole angle would then be 230 degrees. So that's what I get when I add 180 degrees to 50 degrees. Or what else you can do, you can subtract 180 degrees. So 50 minus 180 gives me negative 130. Either of these is correct. Going counterclockwise with a positive angle or going clockwise with a negative angle, they both end up in this position here, and that is the direction of the rabbit's velocity at that time point. So you got to be careful. If the uh, Remember, you look at the components, the x and y components. If it puts it in the uh, first quadrant or the fourth quadrant, then you can go with the answer that your calculator has given you. However, if the signs on the x and y components indicate that you're in the second or third quadrant, then you need to either add 180 degrees or subtract 180 degrees to get the correct answer of the direction of the velocity.
We can use the same process that we used going from position to velocity by taking the derivative. We can use that same method to go from velocity to acceleration. So we'll start off by uh, showing the definition of average acceleration. The change in velocity over the change in time will give me some average velocity over some time interval. But as I let the delta t shrink to zero, I will come up with the instantaneous acceleration, and we can write that as being the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. So down here, the magnitude of the acceleration in the x direction is the derivative of the velocity in the x direction, and then that becomes our coefficient for our uh, unit vector notation for the acceleration, the magnitude in the, of the acceleration in the x direction, and I standing for the x direction. Likewise, for the y direction, it's the derivative of the velocity in the y with respect to time, and the uh, acceleration in the z direction is the derivative of the velocity in the z direction with respect to time. Let's look at our rabbit example once more. We'll start off with the expressions we got for velocity in the x and velocity in the y from the previous uh, sample problem. And we'll take the derivative with respect to time again. So derivative of velocity in the x with respect to time gives me negative 0.62. That will be my x component of acceleration. And likewise, the derivative of my expression for velocity in the y with respect to time gives me my y component of acceleration, 0.44. So that would correspond, of course, 0.44 would be right here, and negative 0.62 would be right here. So if I join those uh, vectors tail to tail, like it was shown in the previous diagram. Then my uh, sum of those two vectors, the x and the y components, gives me my overall acceleration. And I will draw that as the diagonal of the parallelogram formed by those two vectors drawn tail to tail. So here is my acceleration vector pointing in that direction right there. And its magnitude will be calculated using the Pythagorean theorem. So 0.76 meters per second will be the magnitude of that acceleration vector. And once again, I have to be careful when I use the inverse tangent function. The inverse tangent of the uh, y component over the x component is 0.44 over negative 0.62. That gives me negative 45 degrees. But I, I see here my acceleration uh, vector is in the second quadrant. So I have to add 180 degrees to it to give me an angle of 135 degrees. Remember that is measured from the positive x-axis. And this angle right here is 135 degrees.